This week in Orange to Blue Belt class, there's a bunch of things we need to go over. We're going to be talking about our new concept for the month, composure. Keeping our composure, which is really important in stressful situations, whether it be in a self-defense situation or in other stressful situations that we deal with at home or at school or wherever we are. Right, so we had that to go over. We're going to be going over our punch techniques. We haven't spent too much time doing those in the last month or so, but they are part of our curriculum for promotion, so we're going to spend a lot of time on that over the next couple of weeks. We're going to be working on our hook kicks, right, which right, th those are a couple of kicks that we need to, to know and, and really get better at. Um, we have a physical fitness challenge to do. Uh, we're going to work on some hand speed, so there's quite a bit to do today. Let's get started with some warm-ups, and we'll get into the main part of the class after that. All right, so let's get started with our warm-up. This warm-up has got five moves. Each one is for about 30 seconds. The first one that we're gonna do is what's called a tap down yang. I'm gonna demonstrate it once, and then we'll get practicing. All you wanna do is be in a fighting stance. You reach down towards your front, shin, knee, foot, whatever it is. You don't wanna make it a stretch. You just wanna move a little bit, and then you come up and use your back knee. All right, so we're gonna do 30 seconds of that. All right, it doesn't matter which leg you do, because we're gonna repeat the other side in just a second. Ready, set, and go. Tap down down and come up. Now as you're practicing this, it's a good idea to pick something that's on the floor in front of you, maybe like uh, some five, ten feet in front of you that you look at the whole time. I don't want to snap my head down, snap my head up, snap my head down, snap my head up. That'll make me dizzy. Right? I want to pick something that's pretty static right, that I can look at without fear of losing my balance. So just keep tapping down and up. Good. All right, so that's 30 seconds that one. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm going to turn sideways for this demonstration. Ready, set, and go. I tap down, and I come up. And again, I can't stress the importance enough of the idea of you want to move your muscles, but not really stretch your muscle. So if it feels like it's a stretch as you reach down, you're going too far, right? You just want to activate those muscles, wake them up, not rip them up. All right, so a few more seconds. 30 seconds, almost done. And a couple messages, always exciting. Good, and time. Okay, next we're going to jumping jacks. Now, I'm gonna show you a couple different versions of jumping jacks. We have a regular jumping jack, which you're probably familiar with, and then we have a modified jumping jack, which is great. If maybe jumping is not great for you in your environment, either because hmm, you have people underneath of you in your house you don't want to disturb, or maybe you have a, you know, an injury that you're trying to train around. So we're gonna do some jumping jacks. We'll start with the regular ones. Just going like this. Good. Now, if I wanna do a different version, right, all I can do is I just step one foot at a time like that, right? And again, this is not as intense as regular jumping jacks. So you won't feel it as much, but you are working the same kind of muscles that you use when you do a jumping jack in terms of your adductors, your abductors, your shoulders, all that kind of stuff. All right, and we're gonna call time on that one. Okay, so next thing that we're gonna be doing, oh, just turned off my timer, that's a bad decision, uh, is we're gonna be doing some hooks and crosses, right? We're gonna be doing a lead hook and then a backhand cross. Doesn't matter which side you have in front, we're gonna go for 30 seconds, then we're gonna switch. Ready, set, go, lead hook, backhand cross. Right, now as I'm doing this, the big thing we're looking for is the ability to rotate your hip, rotate your feet, rotate your shoulder, but not rotate your head, right? Just like when we were doing those tap down knees, we wanna look at one spot during our warm ups, right? To maintain our balance. And that's generally true when you're throwing these punches, not as a warm up, right? Folks throwing them, you know, knock someone out, be the same idea, okay? So switch your legs, last warm up move, 30 seconds, hooks and crosses. Ready, set, and go. Hook, cross, hook, cross, hook, cross. Turn and turn, turn and turn. Keep breathing, keep moving. All right now, it's a good idea as you're doing your warm up to also work on your breathing timing. You want to breathe out as you punch out. Now, I can't do it because I'm talking, but. If you get used to breathing, you're going to be able to get more reps in, get more energy out, feel a lot better. All right, so we're done with warm-ups. Let's get ready for the main part of class. Let's break down how to do 
punch number two, right? I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of what it looks like. It looks like this. Okay, I'll show it to you once from the side, right? Block wave, left hook, right hook, left hook, okay? Um, now, <clears throat> there, there are a few different struggles along the way for this technique, right? The block wave, turning your hips, right? Uh, keeping your hands up, those kinds of things are important and challenging. Let's try and break this down into a few different levels. So when we practice it, we're, we're going to be good to go. All right, so the first move that we're going to work on is just the, the, the initial defense. We're going to be doing a block wave with a dodge, right? Now, the block is kind of like a middle block, only it's a little bit higher. It's a little bit slanted because we want the punch to deflect up. The wave is kind of like a high block, right? Now, one thing you should notice about this, my elbows practically touch, right? And then I've got a step towards the block because I'm ducking underneath of their arm, okay? So we're gonna try a few of those together, right? I'm mirroring, so you're going to your left using your left hand to the block, your right hand be the wave. Ready, go one, wave with your right, and you set, two. Now you'll notice my feet are kind of underneath of me. Three, that's very important. Four, not, re not really turning very much, five. And I'm kind of facing towards where I'd be pushing away to so I can do my counter strikes, which we're going to do next. All right, let's do it one more time. Go block, wave. Okay, let's start working on the next part. Now we're going to add in the strikes. When we add in the strikes, really there are only a couple things that you have to be aware of. One, you have to make sure you're hitting the right locations. Two, you have to make sure you're turning your body. And three, you need to make sure you're keeping your hands up, right? It's probably the longest section to, to learn. Let's get started with it. So we do our block wave. From here, you do a left hook to the ribs, a right hook to the ribs, and then a left hook to the jaw. Okay, so we're going to do that again. Right, we go block wave, left hook to the ribs, right hook to the ribs, left hook to the jaw. Okay, so keep those locations in mind. We're going to start talking about some of the other details. When we do this, where feet are going to turn, right? So I block wave. You can see my feet are pointing this way. I throw the hook, they both turn. I throw the next hook, they both turn. I do the next hook, they both turn, okay? Now, we're gonna do that again. I wanna talk about how we shift our weight. As we block wave, my weight is all on my front foot. I turn and it shifts to the other foot. I turn again, it shifts to the other foot. I turn again, it shifts to the other foot, okay? Last thing we're gonna talk about is what our hands do. It's pretty simple. They go up by your face, right? So as I block wave, this hand is up like in a normal fighting stance. I throw a hook, this hand is up like in a fighting stance, up like in a fighting stance, up like in a fighting stance. That's so easy. I don't think we need to practice it more than we've already done. Let's try and get this done three times together. Ready? All together. Block left, wave right, left hook to the ribs, hand by your face, right hook, to the ribs, and by your face, left hook to the face, to the jaw. All right, we're going again. Ready? Block, wave, turn your feet, turn your feet, turn your feet. All right, we're going one more time, maybe a little bit fast. Block, wave, hook, hook, hook. All right, that's pretty good. I think we're ready for the next challenge in this technique. All right, we're up to speed check, right? When we're doing this particular technique, going pretty fast is pretty important. I'm gonna show it to you twice so you get an angle, uh, get a sense of it. This is from the, you know, regular perspective here. Hook, 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 right? And then mirrored facing you here. Hook, 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 right? So you wanna have some power in it. One of the great things about practicing the air, you don't have to worry about socking your partner in the ribs or in the head. Okay, so we're gonna be doing this a few seconds. Just practice, ready, set, go. Black wave, hook, hook, hook. Reset, we're going again, and black wave, hook, hook, hook. Good, one more time with me. Good, now just try and go at your own speed a couple times. Right, you're trying to challenge yourself to go fast. You're still keeping your hands up. Just keep getting reps in until the time's up. Just keep going, hopefully you don't need me. If you're having a hard time remembering the pattern, it's a great time to stop this, rewind and review. Right, otherwise, great job. Let's keep moving on to the next part of class. This month we're talking about the concept of composure, which is a really important concept in martial arts. Um, 
in terms of self-defense and then also just how you carry yourself or how you perform at home and school and other environments where there could be stress, right? Something that makes us a little bit scared, right? And when we talk about that, we're gonna talk about a couple different concepts. We're gonna talk about that how your brain actually has different parts to it, right? Some of us are like, what? <laughs> right? Trust me, it's true, right? And there's kind of like the thinking part of your brain, right? And then there's kind of like the caveman part of your brain, right? Caveman part of your brain is just kind of like emotional, doesn't think very much. You think of a caveman cartoon, you're like, oh, I'm gonna smash. <laughs> Okay? Versus the thinker part of your brain, which is going to, you know, make some good decisions instead of, you know, just acting rashly, right? And when, when we're kind of scared or when we're upset or we're angry, right, those emotions are taking control. That's kind of like the caveman part of you that's just kind of like, mm, I want to break something. Mm, I want to run away. Mm, I want to fight. Okay, versus the thinker, which is going to maybe make a better decision. Because most of the time when you're upset, you don't make particularly good decisions. That's when you say the things you don't really mean to say, right? You do the things that you regret, you break something, you're like, oh man, I can't believe I did that, right? You get into trouble, I can't believe I did that, okay? So what we wanna learn how to do this week is be able to stay calm and use that thinker part of our brain instead of like that caveman part of our brain, right? There are a couple tricks to that. One is just to take a few deep breaths, right? Now, when you take a few deep breaths, it actually changes your body in a lot of ways. And we're not gonna get into the, to some of those details, but we're gonna just take three deep breaths right now. Let's try it, ready? Right now, when I do that, I, I can feel different, right? And I can, you might even see someone who's really angry, they get their shoulders up, right? And their face turns red and they tend to make fists and stuff like that, right? And if they take a few deep breaths, you're gonna see that they, their body becomes more calm, their shoulders drop down, their hands open up, right? So you can do that when you're getting angry, also when you're getting scared, right? Or upset, right? Your brother's frustrating you at home, your mom has made you upset because she won't let you do something, your dad's made you upset, he won't let you do something. Right? You start to feel that like kind of energy. Right? Take a few deep breaths and you'll start to be a little bit more calm and maybe you can make a little bit better decisions. Instead of throwing your controller across the room, breaking your TV, you're like, you know, maybe I'm just gonna put this down and I'm gonna try and talk <laughs> instead of smash. Right? So that concept of composure is super important for us as students, it's super important for us as martial artists because we have to stay calm if someone's threatening us. Right? Someone's trying to you know, beat us up or yell at us or pick a fight with us. We stay calm, we don't get angry. So we're gonna keep that in mind as we go throughout class and staying calm. If you find yourself getting frustrated learning a skill, take a few deep breaths. Right, and then go back into the segment and try and work on it again, right? So composure this month, really important idea. Let's keep moving on with the next part of class. So this week, we're working on some hook kicks. Now, we're gonna be doing our hook kick from the floor, and that's a good way to kind of just get the basic um, challenges of doing your hook, hook kick done properly. Now, big things I want you to think about when you do your hook kick is that your foot is sideways, right? And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. That your foot moves sideways, it doesn't go up and down a lot, it goes sideways. And it goes from like the toe side towards the heel side. Okay, so let's walk through what I mean by those three things. So first of all, when I say foot sideways, I mean your foot is like this, not like this, okay? When I do a hook kick, my foot is making contact with the back of my heel going sideways. Second thing is the sideways part. I don't want my hook kick to go up a lot or down a lot when I'm making an impact. It comes through the strike target, sideways like this, boom. And you see it's not perfectly flat, but that's pretty flat. And then the final part is that it goes from like toe side to heel side. So this is the toe side over here, heel side is over here, and it goes from toe side to heel side. As compared to going this way, which is how you usually do a roundhouse kick. You go from your heel towards your toe. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do 10 of these hook kicks from a seated position, right, on each side, right? So let's get to it. Lie on your back, or lie on your side, right? Oh, and when you're on your side, probably on your elbow like this is best. All right, so we're here, we're gonna take our leg and we're gonna come from toe side to heel side. That's one, 
that's two, and you can see my knee bends, three, four, five, six, foot is sideways, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, so now all we're going to do is we're going to roll over to the other side, we're going to do the exact same maneuver. We take our foot, we put it over on this side, we bring it over this way. Ready? And one, two, three, four, five, six, toe to heel, seven, toe to heel, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so that's a good start to doing our hook kick. Now we're going to just test it a little bit before we start standing up and doing it from that position. And what we're going to do is we're going to roll from one side to the other doing a hook kick. Right? So just watch the first one so you get a sense of it. I start on this side, it doesn't matter which one. I do my hook kick, I roll to the other side, do a hook kick, roll to the other side, do a hook kick. Okay, so we're going to do that. Right? Let's just get to it. Nothing too fancy. Ready? Pick a side, doesn't really matter. Do a hook kick, roll over. Do a hook kick, roll over, hook kick, roll over, good. Oh, it's using the top leg. And for bonus points, when you switch from one side to the next, try and have both hands up. I right? could be like, oh, since a Jeff, I'm using my muscles when I do it that way. I know, that's the point. And you just balance it on your behind as you roll from one side to the other side. You're on your back side. As you go to the other side, back side, other side. All right, let's do three more. Let's do two more. Let's do one more. Okay, so that's a good start to doing our, our hook kick. You can practice it as much as you want, but we're gonna scale things up from here. All right, the next step for us in learning how to do a back step hook kick or a spinning hook kick is to do our hook kick from a standing position and the easiest way to do that is actually do a lead leg hook kick, which is really not part of your required cur curriculum. We're not going to test you on it, but it's a good way of learning how to do a back step hook kick or a spinning hook kick. So what we're going to start with is you're in your fighting stance. You're going to take your leg that's closest to the screen, and you're going to do your hook kick. Now, for you, actually, I'll mirror, right? For you, you're going to be using your left leg. You're going to take that front foot, and you're going to come across. Right? And that's not very dissimilar to what we were doing on the floor. You're just standing up as you're doing it. It doesn't have to be particularly high. The big things I'm looking for are the same three things we did on the floor. That you go from kind of toe side towards the heel side. Your foot is sideways, and it goes sideways as you do it. Okay? So um, let's just get to it. We're going to do 10 of them. Ready? Pick up your left foot. One from here to here. Two. Three, again, this doesn't have to be particularly high and fast. Four, right, but you do want to have those three things we talked about. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, we're going to switch our legs. We're going to do the same thing using your right foot. Starting on that side, go into that side. Ready? And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lost my balance there. That wasn't good. Eight. <laughs> it happens. Nine and ten. Okay, now, if you're having a hard time doing that, you might want to pause and redo it. Otherwise, we're going to keep moving on to the two different types of hook kicks that you need to know to get promoted. Now, your back step hook kick, in some ways, is the easier hook kick, um, but still confusing for many people, especially if you haven't done back step side kick. The start of a back step hook kick is identical to a back step side kick. Right? It's got that same back step. We're going to review that for just a moment. 
Watch it a couple times and we'll practice it together. When I do a back step, my back leg steps and is behind my other foot and they cross. Okay, so it's here, step behind, just like that. So that's all we're gonna practice right now. We're just gonna do that back step. So you're gonna get into a fighting stance. I want you to set up in a regular fighting stance with your left leg in front, your belly should be kind of this side. Okay? When you go to do your back step, you step and your heel points at the screen, right? And then you reset. So you can see this foot, when I step, my heel is pointing right at you. My toes point that way. Okay? So we're going to do, hmm, let's do eight. That's a nice arbitrary number. I like eight. Okay? Step one, point your heel at the screen, reset. Two. Now, another thing you should try to do is still look at the screen. Three, now you may have to look at your foot to see if it's pointing in the right direction. That's a good, that's okay when you're learning. But once you feel like I'm doing this right, you should be able to look at the screen as you step. Okay? I think we got three more because I was talking too much. Ready? One, reset, two, reset, and three. Okay, so we got the back step on one side. Let's just practice the other side. Same idea. I'm here, I'm gonna step with my left leg, well, your left leg, my right leg, whatever. Right? We step, we pull on our heel right at the screen, and then we reset. Ready? One step towards the screen, and reset. You should be stepping towards the screen. Two, step towards the screen. If you're stepping away, you're doing it wrong. Three, step towards the screen, with your heel pointing towards the screen. Four, five, Good. We'll do a couple of these faster now. Six, seven, and eight. Okay, now, if you've got that, we just have to add in exactly what we did before, that lead leg hook kick. So we're gonna back step, hook kick, right at you, all right? So this leg, actually, let's stay on the same side we were just on. So everybody, please have your right leg in front. Fantastic. We're gonna step with our left foot, and then the foot that didn't step is the one that kicks. And then I have to go back to where I started, okay? So step with one foot, kick with the other. Both the step and the kick should go at the screen. So you step towards the screen, you hook kick at the screen, and you reset, okay? Now, for, for this week, if you're working on your back step hook kick, the things I'm looking for, you step the correct direction, and that you do those three things in the hook kick, that you go from the toe side to the heel, your foot goes sideways and your foot is sideways. Now, if you are ready to kick higher and faster, awesome, good for you, that's not what we're covering this week. You feel free to do it higher and faster as long as you do those things that I mentioned before correctly. Right? If you have to slow down, or make it lower, low down I guess, to be able to get those few components, step the right way, have your foot go sideways, have it point sideways and go from the toe side to the heel side, then you should do that. But if you're ready, like, sense that Jeff, done it a million times, want to kick high and fast, go for it. All right, we're gonna do 10 on this side. You're in your fighting stance, remember your left foot steps, your right foot kicks. Go one, step, kick, and reset. Two, step, kick, and then reset. Keep going back to the same spot. Ready, three, reset, four, Five, reset, six, reset, seven, reset, eight, take your time, I'm taking my time on purpose, nine, and ten. Okay, we're going to switch our legs, the same basic idea. I want to show you this one time from the side. We're not going to go just yet, you probably just want to watch, you see up. If I'm facing that way, the mirror, right, you know the school, and I step towards the mirror, kick towards the mirror, boom, just like that. All right, so here we go. You're in your fighting stance. You should have your left leg in front. You step with your right foot, you kick with your left foot. So step with your right, kick with your left, and remember, everything goes towards the screen. You step towards the screen, you kick towards the screen. Right. Step, kick, reset, 
step, kick, reset. And remember the big things we're talking about? Foot coming sideways. Go step, kick. Right, don't let your toes turn up. Right? You see your toes turning up? It means you did it wrong. Go step, kick, foot is sideways. And again, we're not kicking high and fast unless you were ready for that. Step, kick. For most people, if you haven't done the kick recently, probably should be focusing on getting it to go sideways. Step, kick. All the things I was talking about earlier. These are common mistakes. Go step, kick. Good. Let's do two more. Ready, step, kick. Good. One more. Step, kick. There you go. Okay, you can practice that as much as you need to slash want to, right? If you are not getting those three things, foot going sideways, going from the toe to the heel, right? Pointing your foot sideways, right? If you're not getting those, I recommend pausing, rewinding, reviewing. Otherwise, we're gonna move on to spinning hook kick. All right, it's time to do some spinning hook kicks. They're one of the more challenging kicks for students to learn. And there are a few things that I find people really struggle with as they do a spinning hook kick. First, especially these are for new people. First, uh, they spin the wrong direction. <laughs> okay? Um, yeah, if you don't want to spin the wrong direction, uh, I'll go into the details of that in a minute. Um, <laughs> second thing when they do their spinning hook kick, they kick with the wrong leg. So they're spinning the right direction, but they end up using the wrong leg, and it makes it more difficult. End up doing a 360 roundhouse kick, which is, I mean, it's a kick. It's just not what we're doing, at least not today. Okay. And uh, finally, when they do their spinning hook kick, they uh, they land in the front, right? We want to come all the way back to where we started. Okay. So those tend to be the big mistakes. Now, for your back step, uh, for your spinning hook kick, you're going to take your front foot, and, and this is kind of the easy way. You don't have to do it this way, but this is the easy way to do it that most of you should do. You take your front foot and you step closed. Just like that, all right? So we're gonna do five of those, right? Take your front foot, step closed, reset. So you kind of point your behind at the target, right? For most of you, you're looking at the screen, you're pointing your behind at the screen. Ready, two, step, point your behind at the screen, reset, and three, reset, four, reset, and five. Good, okay. So that's the first thing, is step. The next thing you do is you turn and look. Okay, now when I turn and look, I step across and I twist my head away from the screen and then back to the screen from the other shoulder. Okay, so I reset back. So it's going to be step, turn, look, and reset. Now if you go and you can't see the screen when you do that turn and look, you did it wrong. Okay, so <laughs> go back and fix it. Right, step across. Turn it until you can look and see. If you can't see, it's not a good kick, or it's not going to be a good kick, right? Let's do two more of those. Step across, turn, look. Can you see me? Hi, we said. One more, step across, turn and look. Okay, and now we're ready for the spinning hook kick. So this is gonna be a lot like the lead leg hook kick in terms of the feel. If it doesn't feel like it, right? Feel like you're going the other direction, it means you spawn the wrong way. Okay, so if I step here and I turn and look, right, the leg that started out farther away, your back leg is going to be the one that kicks, right, and I come around like that, and I want to come all the way around and back if I can, right, so I'm back where I started. So if we're all doing this the same and you have your right leg and back, right, let's do one kind of slow, and we'll get to them kind of fast. You take your left foot, you step across, point your behind at the camera. Turn and look so you can see the camera or see the screen, I should say. Right? Then you're going to take the foot that was farther away, your right foot, and you swing it around and come all the way back to where you started. Okay? I'm going to show you this once from the side, and then we're going to go so you can see my front foot steps, my back foot is going to swing, and it's going to come back all the way to where it started. Okay? So we're going to do this side. We're going to do about 10 of them. If you're pretty comfortable and confident with this and you can do it fast, great. If you are like, hey, I'm learning this and you can do it slow, that's the speed we're going at. Ready? 
Step across, turn, look, swing around, and come back. Again, step across, turn and look, swing around, and come back. Again, step across, turn and look, swing around, and come all the way back. That's super important, right? Let's do it. Step across, turn and look, see the screen, kick, and come back. And again, I'm not doing my best kick, I'm not doing my fastest kick. I'm just trying to make sure we slow this down. If you want to go fast, go ahead and beat me. That's awesome. Do more kicks than me. I hope you can beat me. Step across, turn and look, swing your leg, bring it all the way back, right? Those big things we're talking about, of using the correct leg, spinning in the correct direction, landing it back, those are the most important things. If you can go faster and higher, cool, but you've got to have the important things. Step across, turn, look, swing, and come back. All the way if you can, all right? That's the challenge. Ready, step across, turn, look, swing, and back. Let's do two more on this side. Step across, turn, look, swing, and come back. One more, step across, turn, look, swing, and come back. Okay, so we did one leg, we're gonna do the other. We're gonna kinda go through the first couple ste steps again, but we're gonna do it much faster. So set yourself up in a fighting stance. You have your right leg in front this time. You're gonna step that way. Step across, reset, step across. Make sure your heel points at the screen, reset. Step across, heel points at the screen. Okay, step two, we're gonna step and turn and look. Step across, turn and look so you can see the screen. And reset, if you can't see the screen, you did wrong. Step across, turn and look, see the screen. Reset, step across, turn and look, see the screen. Reset, okay, enough of the easy stuff. Now we do the kick. You're gonna step across, turn and look, make sure you see the screen. Swing around, land all the way in back with your left leg. All right, here we go. One, step, turn and look, swing, and come all the way back. All right, that's one, we got more to do. Ready, step across, turn, look, take that back leg, swing, All right? And it should feel like when we did those lead leg hook kicks and those back step hook kicks in terms of our leg goes from this side to that side. If you go in the other direction, and that's not one of the big problems that we run into with people who are learning spinning hook kicks, you spin the wrong way. Step across, turn, look, swing, and come back, All right? It's kind of fun to say, swing, step across, turn and look, swing, and come back, right? And again, there's plenty of details in this that we can work on, and if you know them, do them, as long as you're doing those base level things, right? Step across, turn and look, swing, and come back. Again, step across, turn and look, swing, and come back, right? In our fighting stance, step across, turn and look, Kick and come back. All right, now, challenge I'm gonna give you now is I wanna see if you can do a few of these without me demonstrating for you, right? So we're gonna do five. I'll give you less and less support each time. Start off in your fighting stance. I'll show you which fighting stance. Bella's pointing that way. Ready, step across, turn and look, swing around, and come back. That's one. Ready, two, step across, Three, turn and look, and spin around. Fantastic, next one. Step across, turn and look, swing around. Okay, now the last two, I'm just gonna say go. Hopefully you can do them. Go. Good, hopefully you're back where you started. Not, mm, not great, <laughs> doing it one more time. And go. All right, so if you were able to do that without too much support, fantastic. Right? Otherwise, pause this, practice as much as you need to, right? Good job on your spinning hook kick. All right, real quick, we want to get started on punch number three, right? Really simple technique, um, easy to remember, hopefully. Not so easy to execute, but let's get into it, right? So, quick demonstration of the technique. You start in your stay away stance, step back, front kick, roundhouse kick, reset. Okay, let's take a look at it from the side, right? Here, my feet are even. Dodge, kick, kick. That's all there is to it. 
okay? So this is a pretty easy technique and there's actually a lot of freedom in terms of exactly what you do in terms of which leg kicks and which leg you step back with. There are a couple little details, right? Let's make sure those are clear so you're all ready for promotion, hopefully by the time we're done with this. First step in punch number three is literally a step, right? You start off in your stay away stance, your feet are even, you, someone's talking, you're like, hey man, just back off. All of a sudden, they decide to punch, you gotta step back out of the way, right? So really simple, if you can look at it from the side, right? You step back, now you may need to move both feet to get enough distance, that's kind of partner specific, right? You gotta read, but you maintain your stance, you don't wanna lean a lot and break posture, right? So really simple, let's do that three times, starting from here, by the way, doesn't even matter which leg you step back with. Ready, step one, reset, step two, reset, step three. Good, that should be pretty easy. Let's move on to the next part of the technique. Next up, a front kick. Now, you can do your front kick with your lead leg or your back leg. Doesn't matter, it's gonna be about belt height. You don't wanna kick super high on this, right? So we start here, we step back, Take leg, you front kick, you land forward and control, right? If you watch it from the side, I step back, I front kick. Make sure you land forward but control. Don't get that long, lungy kind of a step. That's gonna be a problem for us, right? So let's do this together. We're doing it three times. Doesn't matter which leg you step back with. It doesn't matter which leg you kick with, right? Front or back, right or left. Ready, step back, kick. I like to kick with my back leg, but you don't have to. If they're really close to you, sometimes use your front leg. Ready, and go, step back, kick, good. Let's get it one more time. Step back, kick, good, All right? So we've got the literal second step of punch two under control. Third step of punch number three is the roundhouse kick. Now up until now, it hasn't mattered which leg you used, right? Step back with your left, kick with your left, step back with your right, kick with your left, doesn't matter, now it matters. You're going to kick with the opposite leg of whatever did the front kick. So if I am here and I step back and I front kick, this leg's got a roundhouse. Boom, okay? If I'm doing it from the side here, you step back, front kick, this leg's got a roundhouse. Okay, so we're gonna do three of those. By the way, for now, it doesn't matter if you land forward or back on your roundhouse kick, right? We're just practicing it to the air, right? From here, step back, front kick, Roundhouse. Good quality kicks. Reset back. Dodge. Front. Round. Okay. One time without me. Ready? Dodge. Front. Round. All right. There you go. Step four coming on up. All right. So as I said from the very beginning, this is a simple technique, right? Only thing we're going to be doing now is just inputting some speed into this. We maintain some form, things like that. Not too many details to go beyond. Things that you already know about how to do a kick. Keep your hands up, turn your body, all those things. Let's do it. Ready, step back, front, and round. Good, and reset. From here, step back, front, and round. Again, doesn't matter which leg you do, as long as you switch between the front kick and the roundhouse kick. I'm gonna do this one sideways. Step back, front, round. Go again, step back, front, round, good. One quick by yourself, step back, front, round, all right, good job. That's punch three. All right, today we got some push-ups to do. We're gonna quickly break down how to do each of the three types of push-ups in just a moment. Before we get started, I do wanna remind you, this is designed to be kind of an introduction to doing a lot of push-ups. So for most of us, you're gonna be doing them on your knees until instructor specifically says to you that you should start doing some or all of them with your legs straight. Much more important to get that full range of motion when you do your push-up, whatever style it is, than it is to do it a hard way that your body's not quite ready for. So for the most part, do them on your knees. Let's go into the breakdown of how to do each one. Here we go. First up, clap push-ups. How do we do it? Hands shoulder width apart like a regular push-up. We're going to be doing most of these on our knees today. Right, so if you do leg straight, that's fine. You come down low to the floor, you come up, clap your hands, and repeat. Okay, show you once or twice from the side. Right, here, body straight, try not to let your butt stick up in the air too much. Chest comes down, clap your hands, clap your hands. 
Okay. That's a clap push-up, one of the push-ups for the day. All right, we got side-to-side -side push push-ups to do today. We're in a push-up position. Hands are normal distance apart. We're gonna bring our hands together, apart to a push-up, together, apart to a push-up, together, apart to a push-up, okay? Take a look at it from the side. Body's pretty straight. Together, apart, together, apart. Pretty simple. That is how you do a side-to-side -side push up. Diamond push-ups. Hands are close, right? Like this, right? Body, body's pretty straight. Knees on the floor for how we do these. We're gonna come all the way down. Hands touch our chest. Come up, again, hands come all the way down. Uh, chest comes all the way down to the hands, I should say. From the side, you're gonna see my elbows go back, right? So not out this way. Back and up, back and up. You want your elbows to basically touch your ribs as you go down, doing a diamond push-up. All right, let's get started with our push-ups. We're gonna be doing our three different sets. We're gonna be doing clap and side to side and diamond. When we're doing them, you can stop, shake out your arms whenever you need to, right? If you're going faster than me, great. Hopefully, especially if you're a higher belt, you're able to go a little faster than me, right? Um, if you're a lower belt, try and keep up. I'm trying to keep a pace that maybe is intelligent for you. And again, you can stop and shake out your arms whenever you need to. The most important thing, that full range of motion, maintaining your form. All right, so let's get started. Clap push-ups, going for 12. Ready, and let's do it. I've got 12 done. Maybe you're ahead of me, maybe you're behind me. You can shake out your arms in the in between sets if you want to to give your body a little rest, right? Or you can just jump right in to side to sides. Each time you come down counts as one. Now, one thing of note if you're in the middle of the set and you need to stop because you're having a hard time getting that full range of motion, stop. If you don't need to stop, don't stop. You know it's time to stop, only if you can't do it. Right? If it's hard, that's kind of the point. Right? So I've got 12 in on that one. Next up, we've got diamond push-ups again. If you need to shake out your arms, do this as long as you need to, to make sure you have that full range of motion. If you don't need to stop, just jump in. Do some diamonds. Right, little breaks are okay. Long breaks where you go get a donut, not so much. All the way down, make your hands touch, uh, make your chest touch your hands. Okay, so that's 12 of each. All right, time for today's final challenge of the day. This one's about speed, accuracy, and control with our punches. Now, I'm using a pad just as a marker. You can use anything. You could use a sofa, you could have a wall, right? Whatever it is though, it should be something that's not super, super delicate. Right? Don't take, you know, your mom's favorite glass thing on a bobber and put it over there because we're gonna be punching this at it. And we're gonna be using um, either a ball or a small stuffed animal, right? It should be something that you can hold in one hand. If it's bigger than that, kind of cheating. Um, small than that makes it really hard. Um, so if you have a super tiny ball, really hard to do this. And what you want to be able to do is toss this up in the air and punch it out of the air. Right? So you toss, punch, and I felt it touch and it barely moved. That's perfect, right? If you punch it and it goes too far, oh, it went past my red pad, or in your case, maybe it hits the wall or hits the sofa, that's not good, okay? The challenge for you today is to try and get five punches where you touch the thing without touching the other thing. Whatever your things are, whether it's a ball or a stuffed animal or a pad or a couch or your dad or whatever. If you wanna make it harder, stand closer. If you wanna make it easier, stand farther away, right? but you've got to hit it five times without making me hit the other thing, right? So 
I'll do this with you for a little bit. If I'm done before you, okay. Keep practicing, no one watches, no one knows, right? If you're done before me, congratulations, that's wonderful. No one's watching, no one knows, right? So here we go. Set yourself up, try and get your five punches in. Ready, set, go. That's one good one, right? Try and throw the punch like it's a good punch as best you can. Oh, it's two good ones, I like that one, right? If you throw it away farther from yourself, it's better. Oh, three. Good control. Gotta just tap it. Tap it. Oh, I touched the pillow. It's not good. Doesn't count. I gotta try it again. Oh, it was a little too far away. Ah, I touched again. Too much power. That's okay. I just keep working at it. Oh, it's a good one. Right? Now your moves, I'm punching straight. Don't punch up. That's cheap. Yeah. All right. So that's five for me. It's really close to the pad, but it didn't touch. That's five for me. If you got five, great. If not, keep practicing. Just keep going until you get to your five. Don't break your house. Good job today. Thanks for coming.